All right, here's the video for 4.2, Structure of the Nuclear Atom. Now we're going to take a look at the components, what atoms are made of. And they're made of what we call subatomic particles, the parts of the atom. And the atom can be broken down into smaller particles, and they're referred to as subatomic particles. These are electrons, protons, and neutrons. But first we're going to take a look at electrons. And electrons are negatively charged. And initially they were discovered by this guy J.J. Thompson in what's known as his cathode ray tube experiment. So now we're going to take a little look at what that was. A cathode ray tube is the forerunner of the television tube. It is a glass tube from which most of the air has been evacuated. When the two metal plates are connected to a high voltage source, the negatively charged plate, called the cathode, emits an invisible ray. The cathode ray is drawn to the positively charged plate, called the anode, where it passes through a hole and continues traveling to the other end of the tube. When the ray strikes the specially coated surface, the cathode ray produces a strong fluorescence, or bright light. When an electric field is applied across the cathode ray tube, the cathode ray is attracted by the plate-bearing positive charges. Therefore, a cathode ray must consist of negatively charged particles. We know these negatively charged particles as electrons. All right, so he determined that atoms contain small negatively charged particles, and he named those particles electrons. And like in the uh, video you saw, Here's just a picture of his cathode ray. All right, so then inside we have the nucleus. And where the electrons were negatively charged, the nucleus is positively charged. But the nucleus is made of two different parts. It's made of protons, which are positive, right? and neutrons, which are neutral and by neutral it means they have no charge so a lot of time you'll see a proton written as p or p with a plus i'll usually draw it like this neutron you might see as n and zero i'll usually just draw it like that as an empty circle okay okay so Here's a little picture with some protons and neutrons. Here's your protons, here's your neutrons, right? The protons will tend to repel each other, but there's a really, really, really strong force that keeps them together. Without that strong force, the whole thing will blow apart, which I guess would be pretty cool. All right, so this is uh, an important table to copy down, right? All the symbols. So. An electron, the symbol is E minus. I'll frequently draw it like so, just a circle with a minus. I usually try to do it as small as I can. It has a negative one charge, and its mass in AMU, it's one divided by 1,840. And one AMU is the mass of one proton. Its mass in grams is 9.11 times 10 to the negative 28 grams, really, really tiny, and significantly smaller than protons and neutrons. So the proton will be a P with a plus, right? I'll draw it like that, like I told you. It has a charge of plus 1, so it's positive. The AMU, atomic mass unit, is based on the proton, so a proton is a mass of 1. In grams, that works out to 1.67 times 10 to the negative 24. The neutron will be written as N0. I'll frequently just draw it as an empty circle. It has no charge. Mass is pretty much the same as a proton. All right, so more details on the atomic nucleus. And that's based on this guy Rutherford's gold foil experiment. And let's take a look at Rutherford's gold foil experiment. In the early 1900s, J.J. Thompson proposed that an atom was a uniform sphere of positively charged matter in which electrons were embedded. This model is sometimes called the plum pudding model. 
Electrons are embedded in a sphere of positive matter, similar to raisins and plum pudding. In 1910, Ernest Rutherford, Hans Geiger, and Ernest Marsden carried out experiments in which very thin foils of metal were used as targets for alpha particles emitted from a radioactive source. Click on what Rutherford expected to observe, the results Rutherford expected based on Thompson's model of the atom. Based on Thompson's model, Rutherford expected that the positively charged alpha particles should pass through the uniform sphere of positively charged matter with little or no deflection. Click on actual experimental results to see what actually happens. Rutherford observed that the majority of alpha particles penetrated the foil either undeflected or with only a slight deflection. Every now and then, however, an alpha particle was scattered or deflected at a large angle. In some instances, an alpha particle actually bounced back in the direction from which it had come. This was a most surprising finding, for in Thompson's model, the positive charge of the atom was so diffuse or spread out that the positive alpha particles were expected to pass through the foil with very little deflection. Upon making this discovery, Rutherford exclaimed, it was almost as incredible as if you fired a 15-inch shell at a piece of tissue paper, and it came back and hit you. Click on Rutherford's model to see the model of the atom that Rutherford proposed based on his experimental observations. Based on the results of his experiment, Rutherford postulated a nuclear atom. All of the positive charge and most of the mass of the atom is concentrated in a very small volume called the nucleus. Electrons occupy the remaining space of the atom. The radius of an atom is approximately 20,000 times larger than the radius of the nucleus. Most of the positively charged alpha particles pass straight through the diffuse electron clouds of the atoms. Some alpha particles pass close to the small positive nuclei and are deflected at large angles. A few particles score a direct hit on the nuclei and come almost straight back. Okay, so a couple of th key things to remember there, right? Those alpha particles, it's the same as a helium nucleus, right? A helium is going to have two protons and two neutrons. So it's going to be positively charged and doubly so, right? So the important things to remember about the Rutherford atomic model. One was that the atom is mostly empty space. Right, there's a lot of space between that nucleus and where the electrons are moving around it. Okay? Two, the mass and the positive charge are concentrated in the nucleus. So even though you have a nucleus and electrons moving around it, electrons are so tiny that the mass is concentrated all in the nucleus. Okay, now just to get an idea of the relative size, let's say this atom were the size of a football stadium, right? So here you have, say, a football stadium. Yes, I can't draw, I know. And you had, imagine the nucleus in the middle. That nucleus in the middle, compared to the whole football stadium, would be the size of a marble. And all of that is empty space with electrons zooming around. Okay, so lots and lots and lots of empty space inside the atom. All right, that brings us to the end of 4.2. Hope you enjoyed it, and see you guys in class.